Welcome my dear learners for this course on mechanical vibrations. In this module 1, we were discussing on free undamped vibration and free damped vibration. So far, we have discussed free undamped vibration systems and also the introductory concepts of free damped vibrating systems, where in which I have discussed the system response for underdamped system, critically damped system and overdamped systems. By recollecting the formulas which we have derived and discussed so far, let us address numerical problems on damped free vibration from today's lecture onwards. So if I recollect the formulas which we have discussed so far, let me list out the formulas which we have discussed so far. Very first thing is the spring stiffness which is defined as force per deflection, unit will be Newton per meter and next we have damping coefficient which is defined as force by velocity force by velocity which is given by newton second per meter that is a unit and also one should know torsional stiffness torsional stiffness i should replace force by torque and x by theta by recollecting torsion equation i can write t by theta as gj by l this can be written as what gj by l where g is modulus of rigidity j is polar modulus and l is length and next we have discussed natural expression for natural frequency which is given by root of k by m this will be in radians per second or if i know static deflection i can find omega n by using the formula root of g by delta if I know static deflection, I can use omega n as root of g by delta, static deflection. Next, we know formula for natural frequency in hertz, that is omega n by 2 pi hertz. That's what we have learnt in our first part of this module, that is in undamped free vibration coming for damped free vibration the very first concept that i encountered is the damping coefficient damping coefficient is defined as force per unit velocity next we have derived expression for zeta before that i have derived expression for cc that is critical damping coefficient critical damping coefficient cc is given by the formula 2m omega n or it is also equal to 2 root mk and then we have discussed damping factor zeta damping factor zeta is given by c by cc and later we have derived expressions for system response that is system response for overdamped system is given by x is equal to a1 e to the power of minus zeta plus root of zeta square minus 1 into omega nt plus a2 e to the power of minus zeta minus root of zeta square minus 1 into omega nt so this is for what whenever zeta is greater than 1 this is the system response equation for over damped system similarly for Critically damped system, the system response displacement x is given by a1 plus a2t whole multiplied by e to the power of minus omega nt. So this is for zeta is equal to 1. Critically damped system. Similarly for under damped system, we have x is equal to a constant c3 e to the power of minus zeta omega nt sin of root of 1 minus zeta square into omega n plus <coughs> phi 1 or we can also use or we can also use x is equal to c4 e to the power of minus zeta omega nt cosine of root of 1 minus zeta square 
into omega n omega n t plus phi 2 correct i should write omega n t plus phi 2 omega n t plus phi 2 right so where in which this term root of 1 minus zeta square into omega n is called as what damped natural frequency omega d so this is the system response equation for zeta less than 1 so this is for zeta greater than 1 this is for zeta is equal to 1 this is for zeta so these equations are for what these equations are for these two equations are for zeta less than 1 that is for underdamped system and the later we have studied omega d damped natural frequency which is given by root of 1 minus zeta square into omega n what else logarithmic decrement so logarithmic decrement is also studied by us logarithmic decrement delta is given by 2 pi zeta divided by root of 1 minus zeta square this is what we have derived in our previous lecture and also from the definition of logarithmic decrement i can write it as ln of x1 by x2 from the definition of logarithmic decrement i can write it as ln of x1 by x2 so let us draw a line in order to avoid confusion so these are equations for system response for over damped critically damped and under damped system and also we have derived expression for logarithmic decrement for n cycles if i want to analyze logarithmic decrement is also given by delta is equal to 1 by n ln of x1 by x n plus 1 x1 by x n plus 1 so these are the list of formulas one should know to address problems on damped free vibration analysis with this recollection of formulas that we have discussed so far let us address the problem number one of our discussion that is a vibrating system is defined by the following parameters mass m is equal to 3 kg stiffness k is equal to 100 newton per meter damping coefficient c is equal to 3 newton second per meter determine the damping factor the natural frequency of damped vibration logarithmic decrement the ratio of two successive amplitudes and the number of cycles after which the original amplitude is reduced to 20 percent now if i distort the data given for this problem we have the data as only as specified the mass as 3 kg then stiffness is given which is 100 newtons per meter and damping coefficient which is specified as 3 newton second per meter now let us solve this problem if i move for solution the first one is damping factor damping factor is nothing but damping ratio zeta which is given by zeta is equal to c by cc where c is damping coefficient and cc is critical damping coefficient you can see here now to find cc we, we have two formulas one is 2 root mk another one is 2m omega n let us use 2 root mk because we know both mass and stiffness so therefore very first thing i will going to calculate critical damping coefficient which is given by 2 root mk so therefore critical damping coefficient will become 2 times square root of 3 kg into 100 newton per meter which is turning out to be 34.641 newton second per meter newton second per meter so i found out the value of critical damping coefficient hence i can calculate the first quantity of interest that is zeta which is equal to c by cc that is 3 divided by 34.641 hence the value of zeta will be 3 divided by 34.641 which is turning out to be 0 0.0866 0 0.0866 it is dimensionless quantity it is ratios of damping coefficient that is actual damping coefficient to the critical damping coefficient since the value of zeta is less than unity 
the data pretending what he has given is pretends to underdamped vibrating system a standard vibrating system what is what type of vibrating system is this since the value of zeta is less than 1 it is an underdamped vibrating system next moving for the second one the natural frequency of damped vibration is asking for damped vibration hence i should calculate damped natural frequency so moving ahead to calculate damped natural frequency we know that omega d is given by square root of 1 minus zeta square into omega n so first let me calculate omega n which is given by square root of k by m where omega n is undamped natural frequency so we know all the values if i substitute and solve square root of 100 divided by mass is 3 kg hence undamped natural frequency of vibration is turning out to be 5.77 5.77 radians per second now damped natural frequency will become square root of 1 minus 0.0866 square into 5.77 which is nothing but 5.748 5.748 radian per second hence the damped natural frequency fd which is nothing but omega d by 2 pi will be 0 0.91487 hertz 0 0.91487 hertz next moving for third one that is c logarithmic decrement since we know the value of zeta directly i can determine the logarithmic decrement as delta is equal to 2 pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square so what is the expression for zeta you are going to get squaring on both sides and also rearranging i will get delta square minus delta square zeta square is equal to 4 pi square zeta square which is nothing but delta square is equal to 4 pi square plus delta square delta square is equal to 4 pi square plus delta square into zeta square correct so send this to rhs delta square zeta square i can take zeta square common so this is right so hence zeta square is equal to how much or zeta is equal to what zeta is equal to delta divided by root of 4 pi square plus delta square 4 pi square plus delta square so make a note of this equation also this is logarithmic decrement in terms of damping factor this is damping factor in terms of logarithmic decrement Now using the former one, I will get delta as delta will become 2 into pi into zeta. Zeta is 0 0.0866 divided by root of 1 minus 0 0.0866 square. That is logarithmic decrement is turning out to be 0 0.5462. So the value of logarithmic decrement is 0 0.5462. Just I wanted to derive an expression for zeta in terms of delta. That's why I've done this calculation. Kindly make a note of this formula also. It will be useful. Next moving for D that is ratio of two consecutive amplitudes. The ratio of two consecutive amplitudes that can be determined by using definition of logarithmic decrement we know that delta is equal to ln of x1 by x2 so therefore x1 by x2 is equal to exponential of delta hence x1 by x2 is turning out to be e to the power of delta that is e to the power of delta which is nothing but 1.7266 the ratio of two successive amplitude is turning out to be 
six six. Next, moving for E, the number of cycles after which the original amplitude is reduced to twenty percent. So what he is stating? Find the number of cycles after which x n plus one is equal to twenty percent of x n. That is zero point two x one. Find the number of cycles after which original amplitude x one is reduced to twenty percent. So it reduced to original amplitude x one is reduced to twenty percent after how many cycles? Hence. Recollecting the formula for logarithmic decrement based on number of cycles, the last one which I have recollected. So using which I can write delta as one by number of cycles times ln of x one by x n plus one. Now we know all the values. Delta is known, which is zero point five four six two, which is equal to number of cycles is unknown. Into ln of x1 is also not known. Xn plus 1 is 0.2 times x1. So cancelling x1, I'll get number of cycles as ln of 1 by 0.2 divided by delta 0.5462. Which is two point nine five, two point nine five, which is nearly equal to three cycles. So after three cycles, the original amplitude x one will be reduced to twenty percent of its initial value. So this is the complete solution for problem number one. That's all from this lecture. Thank you all.